And then also, it is more establishing the culture of trust. Mm. And we also found that because we had trusted people with our money, and they had trusted us with their money in terms of savings, mm. there was that mutual loyalty and trust. And we would actually find customers coming and saying, uh, my child fell sick, so I'll be late to pay the installment I'm supposed to pay next week. Okay. Yeah. So 2006, listing, mm. uh, growth. Where? Wh what about you in terms of the company now? Now, when we finished the listing, I got an added responsibility. <laughs> 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 so remember, I started as the legal services manager. Yes. So now I was promoted to the company secretary. Yes. And then I was also uh, promoted to director for strategy. Mm. That was, I believe, in 2007. Mm. And then we got another investor coming in. That was Helios. Yes, that one I had. 2007. And it was the biggest foreign direct investment in sub-Saharan Africa at that time at... Two hundred million dollars. Like, that was like eleven <laughs> billion or so. Yeah. I think it was eleven or twelve billion in two thousand and seven. Mm. The reason why we got that money was because we felt now the model has been very successful in Kenya, and it is time for us to think about branching out into the region. Wow! So we got the money two thousand and seven, and we started Uganda in 2008, then South Sudan 2009, Rwanda 2011, Tanzania 2012, and a bit later on 2015, we did DLC, the first acquisition. So, the first one that you started with was Uganda? Yes. 2007? Yes. So, hey. 2008. 2008. Uganda, the money came in 2007. Okay. And then 2008 is when we had the first uh, acquisition. Helios bought up a, a, a percentage of the company. Twenty-five percent. Twenty-five percent. Yes. Of equity PLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was the listed company. Okay. Yes. So what 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 does it? You were behind. You were part of the team that helped the acquisition. Actually, how did you enter into Uganda? We did an acquisition. We had a microfinance called UML. Uganda Microfinance Limited. Yes, that's so what we, did we acquired yeah. Uganda Microfinance Limited in 2008. And that one was drama. <laughs> <laughs> this now, you see, it's you guys who became PLC, so information is going <laughs> I know, everything is out there. Information is it's public. Yes. So, yeah, so we acquired in 2008, but we struggled for several years. Hmm. And, and probably that was because when we looked at it, and because you remember we said, when when things are not going very well, what you need to do is to learn the lessons. Mm. So we realized that we had not understood the culture very well. There are a few business dynamics that we hadn't looked at. Uh, the oversight, the governance was a challenge. So we had to make several changes mm. to put it back on course and the leadership. Mm. So when we changed the leadership, Within a year, the company turned around. Okay. I've written that in the book. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so we, we, we opted to take the lessons. Now, from the lessons we gained in Uganda, we That's used you them. You didn't exit. You didn't no, be no, like, no. this thing is not working. No, 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 because, you know, I, we said, well, we are not, it's not over until it's over. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot give up. So let's understand what we are not doing right. Let's learn the lessons. And when you say you're and learning when the, we lessons, the lessons, it means you're taking L's. You're making losses. It means, it means the, the books are not performing. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't doing well. Wow. But we, we sort of did a, a diagnosis and said uh, governance is an issue. Leadership is an issue. Culture is an issue. Let's do what we need to do. Okay. Because the market is okay. Mm. It's not a market issue. Mm. Yeah. So, and once we dealt with that, we brought in new management 
and within a year you could already see positive growth okay. happening in that market. So that's why I'm talking about learning the lessons. I get it. But also not giving up because something doesn't seem to be working. Just understand what is not working, what are you not doing right? Because if the market is okay and other banks are doing good business there, so the problem is you, the way you are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty. Yeah. I like that. So work on it. Yeah. So, uh, um, uh, I asked a good question when we're off camera and, I'm, and, I, and I think it's worth asking on. Mm. When you guys are coming in with this new banking system or culture, yes, um, to a different demographic, to the, un, to the 96% mm. uh, who are unbanked, the, the financial literacy must have been very low. So what do yeah. you do to... Uh, I can imagine some people like, I'm giving you my money. And then I won't see it and you're telling me I have money. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Yes. So what did you do to gain confidence and trust? Because that's huge. As money is very it's emotional. Sensitive, yeah. it's, it's, it's very yeah, sensitive. sensitive. Actually, that's the right word. You are right. Um, so what we did is we had to educate the market. And it was as basic as this is why you should make savings. And uh, once you make savings, you can get a loan. And then when you get a loan, these are the do's and the don'ts. Because also remember, you have to be careful that you do not get your customers to getting over indebted mm. or they take a loan and they cannot pay Paid, it yes. because they use that money for anything else other than the intended purpose. Uh -huh. So the money has to be used for income generation because it is from those cash flows that you pay back the bank. Mm. So those were some of the lessons that we packaged and then eventually we structured that into a financial literacy program, which we have been doing under the Equity Group Foundation, together with other programs. So we have the financial literacy, we have entrepreneurship training, and it's on those basic things of how do you manage your business? How do I manage my debts? How do I manage my employees? Whether it's five employees or 10 mm. or 20, some are bigger, they are 100, some. So how do I, because those are the headaches mm. that small businesses go mm. through. Mm. So we have so far trained over, um, I believe the number has now gone up to more than 3 million. Wow. Especially the youth and the women mm. on those practices that make you manage your money better, mm. manage your business better, so you also become a better customer of the bank. So that has been a consistent program for the last many years. That's yeah. so powerful. You're mm. teaching them how to manage their business better. Yeah. That way you're guaranteed they'll pay back the loans. Exactly. So what, 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 like at that time, mm. what does the, the NPLs, the non-performing loans, look like? If you can't remember. We have had one of the best NPLs for real in the market compared to the industry. <laughs> and you see that runs counter to what people yes. thought. Because you know people are saying, oh, these guys, when you give them loans, are they going to pay? Yes. We had a different experience. We, for a long time, our NPOs were just 2.5%. What? For a very long time. A very long time. Okay. Yeah, because you see, once you do the education, people manage their money better. They manage their businesses better. And then also, it is more establishing the culture of trust. Mm. And we also found that because we had trusted people with our money, and they had trusted us with their money in terms of savings, mm. there was that mutual loyalty and trust. And we would actually find customers coming and saying, uh, my child fell sick, so I'll be late to pay the installment I'm supposed to pay next week. Mm. Can you please give me another two weeks? And two weeks, for sure, that money will come. So there was also that sense of responsibility and trust by the customer because they knew if equity has trusted me, even me, I must demonstrate my loyalty. Mm. And they would pay our loans. So we have had no challenges with the non-performing loans 
Of course, you know, with COVID, uh, that was a different thing, yes. which is a recent phenomenon in the current environment. There's a little bit of a challenge. But we understand why. Because mm. it's a global thing. Mm, mm. And we believe it's a temporary issue mm. uh, that customers are dealing with. Some of their businesses are not doing well. Yeah. But it's not been an issue wow. in the past. Yeah. 2.5. Yes, <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> so investors would come and are you sure this? this? Yeah, it's true. Because and of course, they do. They do their that thing that you said due yeah. diligence. Yeah, they do their due diligence. And Otherwise, they, people like Helios who never have invested. Um, the share of equity has been among the best performing in the market. Actually, it's the best performing for the banks. What's the share price now? Uh, it's about thirty six now. Um, well, now most of the other shares have gone down. Mm. So it's the best in the financial services. Sector, yes. yeah. um, and it has been very stable, even in the face of the global crisis. Mm. Uh, and, and probably that explains it, because the investors have a lot of faith. Okay. And, and, and they can see it's a business model that will carry the day anytime. Okay. Mm. At the same time, how then, what was it? You see, re growing across the region, mm. I really respect people who are able to do that mm. from a business perspective. The differences in culture, for example, between Kenya and Tanzania, the difference in um, the way people do things, operate. Mm. So you moved to Southern Sudan. after That was your second, the second choice. Uh, yeah, after, South Sudan, 2009. After Uganda. Yes. How was that now? No, I mean, it was... We, that, there we did a greenfield. So What's a greenfield? Um, you start from scratch. <laughs> you know, Uganda, we had acquired someone. Yes, yes, yes. So greenfield is the opposite, where you, you actually build the bottom, branches. Bottom up. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to use that word? <laughs> you, you, you start from scratch. So you build the branches, yes. you don't buy anyone. Oh. That's what it means. So uh, South Sudan was a greenfield. Mm. Um, and it did actually very well between 2009 to 2013. But you see, unfortunately, um, 2013, there was war. Mm. Uh, so, and even in the face of war, South Sudan has not been a headache because they have been able to sustain themselves, even irrespective of the war. Yeah. So the only thing we haven't seen is any notable growth, mm. but it's been under maintenance. Okay. And now we are saying we are hoping there will be stability so we can probably grow a little bit further, mm. a little bit more. But it's been okay. And we really understand the circumstances of the country. What are the challenges that come with that level and speed of growth? Um, it's a good problem to have. Growth is a good problem to have. So the only thing is, if you focus on the critical things, uh, just be sure that your strategy is right. And for us, strategy, strategy is not a problem because we are replicating the model that we know. If you go to Uganda, mm. it's the same equity model. Mm. If you go to Tanzania, it's the same. If you go to DRC, it's the same. Focus on the unbanked population mm. and then grow them up to the higher levels. It's the same model, we understand then focus on systems and processes. And we have already done the investment in the top-rated um, technology platform. Mm. And then get the right people on the ground. So if you go to any of those subsidiaries, you will see very strong teams, teams that are passionate. And then we also have the group team to support them. Mm. And then focus on understanding the market, the customer, the changing trends. What do the customers want? And that is why you can see equity going into the innovations like mobile banking. Mm. I mean, right now we are doing more than 95% of all transactions on mobile mm. and other alternative delivery channels, the digitized channels. Only 5% is going to the branch. Mm. So once you focus on those four items and then a very strong governance and leadership, capability, then you are good because that is part of risk management. Mm. Yeah, and then of course understand the risk and how the risk changes as you grow. Right now, when you do digitization, then you have to think about 
new risks like cyber risks yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But you also see the new opportunities, you know, to serve using AI mm. and, and now you see a lot of new services coming in that bracket. So you just move with the trends and understand where the opportunities are. Isn't equity talking about AI? Yes. <laughs> yes. You cannot avoid the, the ideas whose time has come. <laughs> so is, is brick and mortar ever, are you reducing on brick and mortar? Has digitization got to the point where it's now, we don't need 400 branches, maybe now mm. we need 300? Not really. What is changing is the role of the branch. Uh, not the, the presence. Mm -hmm. So like where last now, the branch used to be the center for transactions. I need 5K, yes. I need 10K, and I go to the branch and withdraw. I don't need to do that anymore yes. because on my mobile, on my app, or Equitel, I can do my transactions, transfer money, buy things, nini, nini. So I don't need to go to the branch for that transaction. So the role is now a service center. Mm where you cross-sell, you serve the third-party um, agents, the merchants, oh. the agents. So it becomes a service center. Mm. Uh, mm. The agents want this kind of support. So the branch does that now. Mm -hmm. And then the agent serves the customers. Yes. So you, you see how it has evolved. I get it. Yeah, so the branch, the role of the branch will still be there. Mm. It is only that it is taking a different trajectory in terms of what the branch actually does. But then also, there are those customers or businesses that require the branch for their operations. Mm. So the top um, uh, customers, they require relationship management, yep. which you can only do at the branch level. Mm. So, so the role of the branch is being redefined not ca completely being cut out. Dismantled. Yeah. 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 So it, it's what you do. Okay. Mm. So the year 2028, I mean, in, tw in 2008, mm. um, unfortunately, same way as post-election violence. Did that affect? Uh, not really. Not really, yeah? Yeah, not really. Because, um, you know, the equity business model it's a business model for the people mm. it's a brand for the people mm. so wherever you go you have the people from that region serving their customers mm. and the customers are the people of that region so they own the business so well as there was that perception that equity would be negatively affected mm. it was not true because actually the customers protected the branches as their own mm. property. Because they said, our kids are in that branch. Mm. They are serving us. Mm. We are taking loans from them. We are taking our savings there. So why should we destroy a branch? So equity was safe. Wow. Yeah, there was nothing. Mm. Okay. Well, so what's happening in your life in this time? Is, uh, you know, uh, at this, at this um, expansion mm. to, to, to the different, region. Yes, yeah. the region. Mm. What's happening in your life? Because um, I can imagine your schedule. Yeah, life uh, goes on uh, because as we talked earlier, it's just a, ma a matter of moving the different parts and making sure all the parts are moving. So at that point now, my kids have grown, they are growing. They are going now from se to secondary school, high school, um, and eventually to the university. That mm. was uh, around 2011, 20 to 2016. Mm. That's when my two daughters went to university. Um, yeah, I mean, so it, it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, you don't stop one because the other one yes. is happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What so I'm, everything I'm continues. Your corporate and your personal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Everything continues. Yes. The way we said. Because you, you're beyond. You integrate. I don't, I don't want people to just think you're a corporate human being. Mm. You get there is time yes. when you're that. Yeah. But you're a human being with feelings, mm -hmm. emotions, yes. responsibilities, and mm -hmm. all of these other things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kids were growing and um, uh, making very good progress. My two daughters graduated, one in 2015, the other one in 2016. Um, 
and they started working. Uh, one has gone back for an MBA. She's mm. now in Canada. Uh, so, so you know, life continues mm. in all the aspects. We say it. family, friendships, uh, work, mm. and the spiritual side. Yeah. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Powerful. Let me ask. In all this time, is there something mm. that didn't work? You know, I don't want this to sound like a superhero story that, that only has... The only yeah, has... The, the fairy tale. Yeah, like, with, hey, with all guys, happy endings. And yet, guys are like, ah, for a ground bit any different. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you've read my book or my... I, I, so I intentionally did read your book. You did not read. So that I can go back okay. and read. So if I'll, I read, I'll, 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 I'll be biased. Okay. and may not ask because okay. I already know. So then I'll tell you uh, something I've talked about in the book. 